Observation of Structural Color in Peacock Feathers by Carolyn Doctor and Yuta Hagia. The goal of this experiment is to determine the relationship between the wavelength of color, the width of the diffraction pattern generated by the color, and to an extent the diffraction spacing that is generated by the color and pattern. The red helium and neon laser has a wavelength of 632.8 nanometers. The feather has anis anisotropic properties that grazing method will also be used with passing method. The color black on the feather's eye did not generate a diffraction pattern, suggesting that the patterns are caused by the color rather than the spacing of the bristles. Conflict and results led to the result being inconclusive. Peacock feathers generate color through pigments and microstructures. These feathers have microstructures on these fibers with specific spacing. The microstructures are made of small plates, which causes interference and resulting color. The diffraction equation is used to calculate D, the spacing of a grate. The first order intense point is used to measure width in centimeters. The distance from the feather to screen is kept at 195 centimeters. Much of these materials were found in the lab room. The tracing paper and frame were used to build a screen for the diffraction pattern to project on. The peacock feathers were bought on Amazon, however its genuine quality is in question. The procedure can be summarized into four steps. Build a screen, focus the light source, find the diffraction pattern, record a projected diffraction pattern width. The phone was used to take pictures of a clear ruler overlapping the projected diffraction pattern. The diffraction equation was rearranged to solve for spacing. The theta will be replaced with arctangent of the width over distance from screen to feather. Using the data, the correlation between color, width, and space are determined. This 3D printed equipment was built to assist in finding the diffraction pattern. As it can be difficult to see some diffraction pattern on the big screen due to decreasing intensity of the pattern. This is the setup. The concave and convex lens are used to focus the red laser. The feather is clamped on the chemistry lamp. The small screen is placed very close to the setup, but is removed once the diffraction pattern is found and can be clearly seen on the big screen. From the front of the big screen, diffraction patterns may be hard to see, but one can clearly see the pattern behind the big screen. There, the width of the pattern is measured with the ruler and a picture is taken with the phone. This is the summary of the setup. This setup consists of a 100 millimeter concave lens and a 25.4 millimeter convex lens. The setup is done in a way to keep the focal point not too close to the lens, nor not too far from the lens. Trial and error was done to achieve the desirable result. These are some of the feathers used in the experiment. Depending on the angle the light is shown, the green portion of the feather appears violet, showing the anisotropic property of the feather. These pictures shows the lack of a diffraction pattern generated by the black eye, suggesting that the patterns are not caused by the spacing between fibers, but rather the microstructures. However, one cannot be too confident. This is a reference measurement of 30 micrometers that is calibrated and taken a picture with a strong microscope with a CCD camera mounted on top. 0.2 micrometers per pixel will be used as conversion 
when measuring the spacing on the fibers. These are examples of spacing on the fibers that were taken with the microscope. Observation of the black eye with the microscope shows that the fibers lack microstructures, but instead have rough surfaces. These are examples of some of the diffraction patterns that were taken. The bottom left used the grazing technique. Despite the feather appearing green on the picture, from the lens perspective, it appears as purple. This data shows the measured width and the calculated spacing using the diffraction equation for each color. The graph that is shown below shows the wavelength of color versus width. Blue was removed as an outlier when plotting the graph. This is the data that were recorded using the calculated spacing using the diffraction equation and the measured spacing using the pictures from the microscope. Notice the inverse relationship on the calculated spacing and the wavelength of color and the direct relationship between the measured spacing and the wavelength. These two graphs shows the trend with calculated spacing versus wavelength shows an inverse relationship while measured shows direct relationship. The top three p-values compare the data of the calculated spacing with the data of the measured for each color. The p-values were so small they were rounded to zero. The bottom one compared the spacing data of the calculated and measured for all of the color. The resulting p-value was greater than 0.05, showing that there is a correlation between wavelength of color and spacing. However, the small chi-square conflicts with this correlation due to how small it is. There is a relationship between the wavelength of color and width where they are proportionally related with increase in wavelength results in increase in width. However, the spacing data is conflicted between the calculated and measured. It is unclear if the diffraction patterns are truly generated by the microstructures. There is a correlation between width and wavelength. However, more tests should be done with more colors and different kinds of materials. Due to the lack of strong evidence and conflicting results, the test is inconclusive to see if there is a relationship between width, wavelength, and spacing. These are some of the notes that may have affected the results. One of the major concerns was the setup where there were much room for improvements. The feather was not completely flat and may have affected the angle which incident light hits the surface. The distance from the feather to the screen was inaccurate due to the warped meter stick. Air conditioner in the lab room subtly moved the feather which may have led to multiple diffractions. Some diffraction patterns had diffraction patterns inside, as shown on the picture. Both instances were recorded and used in the calculations, which may greatly affect the results. The experiment has many rooms for improvements. Authentic feathers should be used. A setup based on reflection should be used to ensure that the microstructures are causing the diffraction patterns. Shortening the distance from screen to feather will increase the clarity of the intense points. A better and more adjustable stand should be used. This was the observation of structural color in peacock feathers experiment which was designed to see the relationship between spacing, wavelength, and width. The test was left inconclusive due to conflicting results and lack of strong evidence. Thank you very much for watching this video.